Okay, so the observer. So it's very important to um, to get the fundamentals of the observer. I should hold something different. Um, okay, oh, no, I'm going to do the mug. The mug is good. So okay, so this is a mug. So everyone that's looking at the mug. That, uh, now, a mug is an object. Okay. Now, a mug is an object which has a shape a discernible limited shape. So the mug is a limited object which has a shape. Now, if you're observing, that which observes the mug has to be bigger than the mug. Yeah, the observer of the mug cannot be smaller than the mug. Are, are, you, are you with me? This is an experiment. These are experiential. These are not intellectual questions. You with me? Yeah. So you observing the mug. Okay. Now, Anything that is observed to come and go, if, if an object passes before you, that it's not here, and then it's here, and then it's gone, is it you? No, it's not you. Because if it's not here, you're still here. The observing is still here. And then when it's here, um, it's still not you, because you are also here when it was not here. So it's just a thing that can pass. Okay, so that's, that's the thing. Now, also, a mug is an object which is meaningless. It's not, a, it's not what I call a special object. Yeah. So, there's going to be no confusion. No one here is confused that they are the mug. So, it's a detached, it's a detached observing of an object. When there's a detached observing of an object, then it, there, is, there is a detachment, a clarity, that the object is not you. And this is experiential, this is not mental. It, it's very clear that no one is confused, they are the mug. So the next thing is, um, uh, let's use something that was talked about here, like tiredness. Tiredness, everyone, if you start to feel tired, tired is like an object, it's like a cloud. You know, like if you're observing a blue sky, uh, and then a cloud c goes into the blue sky in front of you, are you the cloud? You're not the cloud. Just because, because a cloud is a passing object. See, blue sky, you, you observe the blue sky, and then when a cloud is in front of you, it doesn't mean you're the cloud. And as the cloud passes, you're still that which observed it come and go. So this is the thing with tiredness. If like a, suddenly there's lots of energy, and then suddenly, like a, a cloud of tiredness comes in front of you. Something knows when there is tiredness and when there's not tiredness. So that observing of when tiredness is here and when it's not here, is here when the tiredness is here and when it's not here. So when tiredness is here, the observer of tiredness also observes tiredness. And the observer of tiredness is not tiredness. And when the tiredness starts to pass, that which is observing it pass is still here. So, tiredness is an object. Okay, so thinking, thoughts. Everyone, um, I would say, uh, most people have experienced at least a moment when there's been no thoughts. There's just been presence and not a thought. Or maybe there can be many thoughts, or there's few thoughts passing. So, that which observes a thought pass, or when there are thoughts and when there's not thoughts, is the, obser the observer, and this is an experiential question, that which observes when thoughts are here and not here, is it a thought? It's not a thought. The observing of thoughts coming and going is not thought. The observer is thoughtless. So that's an experiential question to experience. Okay, these are all experiential questions. When th sometimes there are no thoughts and yet you, there is an observing. And then there's a thought. So. A thought is not what you are. Thoughts are things that come and go, or are here or are not here. But your intrinsic nature, your infinite nature, is here, whether there is a thought. A thought by its nature is something limited, which passes. Like a mug is something which has a limited thing, which passes. Okay, so what about, loca you know, we have things more subtle, like location. Now, this mug is in this location, in front of you. And as it changes location, it's now another. So, but that which observes location, 
the observer of different locations. Does it have a location? There's no good. So experientially, when you're in that which observes location, be in the observer of location. Does the observer of locations have location? So be in that experientially, and you'll experience that the observer of location has no location. It's locationless. It doesn't have an ex there is no lo experience of location in that location. Now time. You know, the, the, the experience of the passing of time, the tracking of time. That which observes <coughs> the tracking of time or the experience of time, be that, be in the observer of that. Now the observer doesn't, ha doesn't, um, doesn't identify, it's detached. So being in the observer of time, is there the experience of time in the observer of time? So there's no experience. Okay. So these are all experiential. If you go into your thoughts, go back into the observer, because the thoughts do not exist in the observer. So now that you're, you're in that prior to thoughts, the observer that observes thoughts, but which is not a thought, the observer which observes location, but is not in location, the observer which uh, is detached from time, so does it, where time does not exist, Okay, so in this place, so the inquiry now is, does this the experience of this, when you're in this experience, beyond time, beyond thought, beyond location, in this experience, is there any experience of limitation? Does, is, this, is there any experience of something being limited or contracted? Can we have a, a nod yes or no? Body. The body. Okay. So, okay, the body. Thank you. The body. Okay. So, the body, the body, my awareness, when I was doing the body, most of the time I'm not aware of body. I was aware how I did that. So, the body seems to have like a, a dimension. Like, see the mug. Mug has a dimension. Yeah. So, when you go to that which observes the mug, and you're in the position of the observer of the mug, the observer of the mug is beyond the dimensions of the mug. Are you with me? Okay, so if you're aware of body, so you'll be aware of a shape with a lim limitation, yeah? So now go into that which observes body. Be aware of the object of the body, now be in the position of the observer. Uh, nod your head yes when you're in the position of that which is observing. Okay, is the observer of the body limited by the body? No. Okay. Anyone is stuck in the body as the body? Are you in the observer of the body? You're stuck in the body. I tend to be very stuck in the body, but I'm aware that that's a thing that might okay. release with time. Okay. Okay. Right now, yeah. if you're aware of the body, can you be in the position of that which is observing that awareness? Does the body exist in the observer? No. I'm starting to see it. Good. Good. Did you, did you, were you in there at least for a second? In the I observer? Can, I can go there. The body is still there. But Good. it, but I'm <clears throat> aware that there's a separation between what I sense as a body and the observer. I, I, I see you, you the see, you, You're starting between, to get the sense. Okay. Yeah. Let's see where, how far we can go then. Okay. So, the, there's awareness of the body. Okay. Okay, so this is a mug. Okay, can you be, you're, it's easy to be the observer of the mug. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. now can you go, now the observer of the mug has interest in the mug. So that's why it's aware, mm -hmm. it's registering the mug. Okay, so there's still, even though it's a detached observing, there is still some identification. Mm -hmm. So you're in, an, you're in a quite a detached observer. Now go to the observer, be in the position of the observer of the observer, where there's no interest in, a, in, in the observer. Can you do that? Are you with me? Where there's no interest in the observer. Yeah. Just nod your head when you're there. Okay. Okay. Okay, so... Does a mug exist there? Mm, there's a 
there's a, a, a sense of further detachment. Good. Okay. That's, that's good enough. Okay. So as you realize, as you, as you go into observers where there's less and less identification, these things dis disappear. In fact, at a certain point, they no longer exist. And that's your experience. They, they will no longer exist. Okay, good. Now, that, that's how you do it, you see. If you keep doing that, if you keep going to the observer of something which is habitually there, it will start to dissolve and then not exist. If you keep on a regular basis going to the observer of time, all the, you know, on a regular basis, you, time will stop cease to exist for you. If you keep going to that which is regularly the observer of the body, the detached observer of the body, the body will no longer exist for you as your experience. Yeah, if you go, so all of these things dissipate. They only exist if there's identification, you see. And so it, enlightenment is the experience of self as limitless, beyond all, uh, beyond all limits, you see. So enlight, enlightened, uh, what's the right word, enlightened being, an enlightened presence does not experience self as limited. It's beyond limited. So hence... Hence, uh, the Course in Miracles thing, which is trying to break one of the biggest attachments uh, that exists, uh, says, I am not a body, not a body, I am free. Free means not limited, not limited by the body. I am as God created me. That's not an intellectual construct, that's a, that's a statement based in truth. So, to identify with the body is to bind you to separation, which is an illusion. But that's not a theory, that's a, that's a, that can be experienced. Okay, that's, uh, we'll put this off.